four, three, posting column totals from a journal to a general ledger. So one objective, we just need to be able to post column totals from a journal to ledger accounts. So um, what they're showing us here is we've already posted our post reference column, okay? Remember, all of these show that we post, they should have one here too, okay? Um, so what we're going to look at now is we now have to post our totals. Now, when we look, we have a check mark um, in these two. Um, these check marks simply mean that they are not posted individually, or that they are posted individually, um, and so we don't post those totals. Okay. So when we look um, this number here, this total, these numbers were already posted to their individual accounts, so therefore we don't want to post their total. Also, if we think of it this way, if we look at this total, the account is not a general. We don't have a general account. So there's nowhere to post these totals to. Okay. Now we put that check mark there to remind us that it's not that we forgot. It's just that we don't have a place to post them. So we're going to have those check marks. Okay, the next thing that we're looking at then is our sales credit total. Here's our sales credit total. Okay. So to go post that total, we're going to go to our sales account. So here's our sales account in our general ledger. We start, we have those five same steps. So we start with our date, post reference column, which is our journal page. So now we're on journal page two. Now, this is a credit. When we look at this, notice it's labeled as a credit. So we're going to post that as a credit. And then we find our new balance, which will simply be that same number as a credit. Our last step is to bring our account number to our journal page. Now, since we don't have a column for this for our post reference, we're simply going to write that account number underneath that total in parentheses, showing that we have posted that number to our sales account. Now we're going to move on to our cash debit total. So that's going to go to our cash account. So we find our cash account in our general ledger. Start with our date our journal page number. This is a debit, so we're gonna write that in our debit column. We're gonna find our new balance, which is the same number as a debit. And then that account number needs to go to our journal page. Again, we're gonna write that underneath the total showing that we have posted that number. Our last total then is to our cash credit. Again, we're in our cash account. Start with our date, our journal page number. This time it's a credit. Now we need to find our new balance. So our before balance was a debit, and now we have a credit. Remember, if we have a debit and a credit, we subtract to find our new balance. Our debit number is larger, so that means our new balance is a debit balance. Our last step then is to bring that account number up to our journal. So this is what our journal page will look like when our posting is completed. Remember, we're gonna look at our post reference column. We should have a number or a check number or a check mark on every single line. If we were to look, remember that check mark says, okay, that number was not posted individually to an account. If we have an account number, that tells us if I want to look at the, that entry, I'm going to look at account number 150 to find that post. We also are going to look down at our totals to make sure that we have a check mark or a number underneath all of our totals. These two check marks tell us that these numbers, these totals aren't posted because all of those numbers were posted individually. And then these ones tell us, okay, we're going to look at account 410 to find that total. 110 to find these. Um, this is just showing us, oops, sorry, this is just showing us our general ledger with our posting completed. Um, I know it's really small, so this is just showing us what our account balances look like, what our accounts look like when we're done posting. All right, question number one. 
which column totals of a journal are posted. So what totals do we actually post? We only post the special amount column totals. So our general debit, credit, and our debit and credit column totals, those are not posted. Number two, under what conditions will an account balance be a debit? Whenever the debits in an account exceed the credits. So if we have a debit and a credit to account, remember we're going to subtract to find the new balance. If the debit number is higher, that means it has a debit balance. If we had two debits, we're going to add together and we would have a debit balance. Number three, under what conditions will an account balance be a credit? That is just vice versa from the debit. Whenever the credits in an account exceed the debits. So again, if we have a debit and a credit to an account, and the credit amount is higher, if we subtract the credit amount is higher, it has a credit balance two credits to that account, we add those numbers together, and it is a credit balance. That was the end of 4-3. If you have time, please go on to the 4-3 work together.